is uh, Martha Mack with SO4J TV. We are here with the Executive Director of uh, Grace to You Ministries. This is Phil Johnson. He's also an elder and one of our pastors at uh, Grace Community Church here in Sun Valley, California. Um, and uh, we want to ask Phil just some questions about what happened, an incident that happened here last week at Grace Community Church on the Cup. Yeah, there was a there was a guy who had come over here from Scotland who had a sort of charismatic bent. Uh, in fact, he was sort of driven by the idea that God had spoken to him directly and told him to come to Los Angeles to preach. I, whether the instruction to you know try to confront John MacArthur was in the original message or not, I don't know. But he, he linked up with some people who uh, come to Grace Church and uh, spent uh, a number of weeks here in L.A. doing supposedly evangelism or what, whatever, and you know pretended that he was very supportive of our church and what we stand for and all that, and managed to get his way into the worship service in a in, in a seat close enough that he was able to jump up, get on stage and interrupt John MacArthur on the first Sunday John was back. And he uh, claimed he had a private message from God for John MacArthur. It was a message of judgment and condemnation because he said John MacArthur's a false teacher. And uh, so it was, you know, we, we have, I've been here for 35 years, nearly 35 years, and uh, it's not that, it's not unheard of that someone would interrupt our service like that. That's about the third or fourth time I can remember that something like that has happened. The first guy I've seen actually get on stage and do it. Often you have those disruptions from the back of the auditorium. Uh, but this guy uh, managed to get on stage and uh, for about 20 seconds while he was up there, you know. Uh, so they, you know, some people accuse Grace Community Church of being ungraceful uh, with this man. What, what happened? Did you talk to him? Did somebody I did. Talk to him? I did. This security. Uh, there are security team who, uh, you know, deal with disruptions and things like that, and they, they gently escorted him off the stage and uh, took him to the back door and out, and then uh, uh, walked him over to uh, a building that security uses for things like that. Uh, that's a, what he did is illegal. It's, a, it's against the law in most states, and so uh, it's just our policy when there's a disruption like that to call the police. The police came took a report and, and all of that and took him to jail. He was uh, he was here illegally. My understanding is his visa had expired. And uh, so they took him to jail. Uh, but while he was here, waiting to be processed and all of that, I spoke to him. Some other people spoke to him. Uh, he was sort of an incorrigible sort of... That's the difficulty with that theology. If you believe God has spoken to you, then it really doesn't matter what Scripture says. In this case, what he did was a clear violation of Scripture. That you don't rebuke an elder like that. So even if he thought he had a legitimate rebuke, that was an unbiblical way to deal with it. Uh, and then, for those of us who tried to talk to him and all, he was pretty much incorrigible. He believed he had obeyed the voice of God, and uh, uh, you know he wasn't going to be dissuaded otherwise by any biblical argument or any other kind of argument. So, so he was handled very graciously by... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was totally uninjured, and and uh, in fact, when I saw him, he was he, he was I think drinking a cup of coffee or something like that, sitting at a table. Is he back in Scotland now? Do you that's think? my understanding. That he had a plane ticket to go back to Scotland, and as soon as he was released from jail, they sent him back. And then, is there anything good that came out of this? Do you think you know what Satan makes for evil? God can turn it around. Do you see the good that came out of it? Is there anything that we can learn from this whole situation? Uh, you know, in other churches. I think time will uh, will reveal more, but yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I see it as a as a living example of why that sort of theology is dangerous. Uh, you know, uh, he, he's just one of probably thousands, hundreds of thousands of people around the world who think the way they learn about God or hear from God is through their own head. In fact, one of the security guys asked this fellow while they were talking to him. When God speaks to you, does he, because this fellow was from Scotland, he said, when God speaks to you, does he speak with a Scottish accent? And the guy said, you know, I never thought about it, but yes, he does. Oh, wow. And see, in my mind, that's, that's, that's proof that what he's hearing is, is the voice of his own imagination, because right. God doesn't speak with a Scottish accent. He, he, mm -hmm. You know, but, but I think you'd find that's the universal experience of Everyone who claims they regularly hear the voice of God in their head 
what they're hearing is their own imagination. So you, you'll discover that the God they listen to is very much like themselves. Speaks with the same accent, has the same ideas. You know, it's it's uh, that's why it's a dangerous theology. Scripture says it's a fool who trusts his own heart. And if somebody thinks that the voice of God is coming from within himself, he's on very dangerous grounds. That's right. Well, we won't uh, take up any more of your time. We're going to be teaching today. Are we going to be talking about? Actually, I'm not. I'm off this week. Mike Riccardi is teaching. You have a break. Yeah, I'm on <laughs> again the, next week. the drama last week, right? Right. <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much for talking with us here. Johnson, that uh, grace to you ministries and Grace Community Church pastor and elder and grandpa. <laughs>